Funding for Prepare Yourself has been provided by the Sonoma County Department of Emergency Management. Actions change outcomes. Let's get ready together. Learn more at socoemergency.org slash get ready. Hello and welcome to this edition of Prepare Yourself, your local library of useful info when it comes to preparing for a disaster or emergency. I'm Hannah Lee, one of your guides for the show. Thank you, Hannah. And I'm Chase Overholt, your other host for our program. As Hannah here just reminded you, this is the place to find out what you can do to prepare yourself for whatever disaster might come your way. Believe it or not, planning ahead can actually be fun. On this episode, we'll be learning all about how to prepare for an earthquake or tsunami. We'll be covering some important topics like practicing earthquake safety at home and work, how to prepare your home before an earthquake happens, where to take shelter if there's a tsunami, and so much more. Hannah, I've never prepared for an earthquake before. I'm kind of scared. You might even say I'm a little shaken up. Okay, very funny. But don't worry, okay? There's no need to be scared if you're prepared. We'll be right back with our show after these messages. Stay tuned. Man, getting ready for all these earthquakes, fires, and floods sure is a drag. What? No way. Being prepared is super cool. But I wish there was some way to make preparing for disasters fun. Well, there is. Check this out. Now that's what I call Disaster Hits Volume 2 is six hours of chart-topping award-winning disaster songs all compiled for you on a three CD set. This special TV offer contains 114 tracks of disaster hits you just can't get enough of, like The Tectonic Slide, Three Days of Canned Beans, Before the Shaken Starts a Quaking. Before the shaking starts a quaking, do you know just what to do? Secure your shelves right to the wall and move heavy things that could fall and harm you. Make a kit of food and water, seven days at the minimum. Practice hiding under a table Do you see where I'm coming from? Baba doo up, baba doo up, up Whoa! Disaster preparedness sure doesn't rattle me anymore. Now that's what I call Disaster Hits Volume 2 is not available in stores. Order now by calling the number on your screen or send check or money order. Three CDs, $49.99 plus $10.99 shipping and handling. If you pay by credit card, you'll get a free Disaster Hits t-shirt. Rush delivery available. Call now. Hey kids, get ready to duck and cover because Shaky the Quake Snake is here. Shaky is all shook up about earthquake safety. Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about a very important part of being ready for an earthquake. Why? Because earthquake safety is my thing. I'm a snake. I don't bark or sting. And there's no one here to bite. Earthquake safety, it's all right. Being unprepared makes me rattle. But if you don't know yet, I won't tattle. I'm an emergency preparedness expert. I'm not a poet, okay? Today's topic is tsunamis. Kids, we don't want anyone unprepared in an emergency. We want you to stay on your toes, if you have them. Now we have a guest who knows everything there is to know about getting out of the way of the ocean. Sam, are you there? Sam, the kids are ready to learn about tsunamis. Oh, 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 thanks, Shaky. Hello, children. I'm Sam, the seal, but you can call me Sammy. I practice getting away from the ocean all the time with my family. Oh, oh. Right after an earthquake happens, if it's out at sea, there is a chance that a dangerous wave will come ashore. And if that happens, it's important to get out of there. My family and I practice hauling out to higher ground to stay safe and dry, and you should too. Oh, oh, was that a fish? Fish are so tasty. I mean, friendly, friendly. We like to get up on tall rocks like this, and then we can relax and maybe it's 
sunny and warm, safe. Sam, this tsunami prep is really important. Stay on board with us. Yeah, it's not hard. Do a practice drill with your family. It can be fun. Oh, 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 oh. oh. And find a nice spot where you can say safe and dry and kind of cozy and... Sammy has apparently given his all for higher ground. But getting to higher ground fast is important to do if there's a tsunami after an earthquake. Please make a plan, people. Remember, kids, the next time the earth starts shaking, you can be prepared, like Shaky, the quake snake. Some things to remember during an earthquake is after the initial shaking is to expect that aftershock that's gonna come. For some folks, they want to go out, check on family, check on friends, maybe go check on an elder family member. But some things to keep in mind during an earthquake is just those, those road conditions. Um, what does that mean? Um, especially with overpasses, roadways, freeway overpasses and underpasses. We have taken take consideration, um, depending on how severe the earthquake was, that there may be some damage to those, to those roadways. And it takes a little bit of time for the public works or Caltrans, uh, for their safety inspectors and whatnot to, to get out there and do those visual inspections of those roadways. There's so many things that you can do to prepare that um, go across all disasters and types of emergencies. It's having a supply of food, uh, canned food and whatnot, that can take you for three, four, five days. It's having enough bottled water for each member of your family, about roughly about a gallon to gallon and a half per person per day. And not only having that water for drinking water, but also having water for sanitary type items for washing hands, washing dishes and whatnot. Having basic things that we take for granted um, day to day, can openers, manual can openers to having a, a lighter. It's, it's just very simple, basic things to keep in a go bag uh, that can go across all emergencies and disasters. This is You're in Jeopardy. And now, your host, Catastropher Jones. Thank you, Jimmy, and thank you, everyone. Welcome back to our game today. Now let's meet our champions and see how they fared after the last week. Shockingly, in third place, with negative $34,000, is three-time Nobel Prize winner, Professor Fiona Fitzgerald, a geophysicist from Harvard University. This game is rigged. I've answered every question correctly. What is going on here? Well, better luck this time around, Professor. And in second place with just $26 is Mr. Bob Ross himself. Now tell me, Bob, what happened here? You were doing so well in our first game, and then it seemed like everything went downhill. Now, catastrophe, there didn't seem to be too many categories about painting last week. And you know, maybe if there were, I might have done a little bit better. But no matter, really, I'm perfectly happy with my $26. Uh, yes, I will remember to put more categories about painting next time. And in first place, somehow, with uh, $172,000 is Blake Duncan, a snorkeling instructor from Laguna Beach, California. You're, you're going to have to take that thing out of your mouth. Oh, oh. oh sorry, dude. Um, oh, I'm just so... Just so stoked to be here, man. You have no idea. And we're so stoked for you too, Blake. All right, players, good luck, and let's get to work. Here are today's categories. The big wave. Uh-oh. Get under the table. It's not my fault. And shake what mama gave you. <laughs> oh. Blake, since you're our champion, you have control of the board. Okay, man. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, I think I'll take get under the table for 400. In the event of an earthquake, immediately take these three actions to protect yourself. <laughs> Professor Fitzgerald. Drop, cover, and hold on. Ooh, not quite right. Yes, Mr. Ross. What is drop, cover, and hold on? Correct. What? During an earthquake, remember to drop to your hands and knees, cover your head and neck, 
or get under a sturdy desk or table for shelter and hold on until the shaking stops. <laughs> Bob, you have the board. Hmm. I think I'll pick the big wave for $600. Oh. Taking shelter in an area that is 100 feet or more above sea level and at least one mile inland can keep you safe during this type of disaster. <laughs> Professor. Tsunami! I'm sorry, that is not correct. And Professor, volume is not the issue here. Blake. What is the end of the world? Ooh, no, I'm sorry, that is not the correct response either. Seriously, dude, the end of the world is the only time that I would be away from the beach. It's where I feel the safest, personally. Okay. Mr. Ross. What is a tsunami? Correct. I just said that. Ooh, speaking out of turn, $10,000 deducted from the professor. Bob, you're up. I'll go with shake what mama gave you for $600. This smartphone app provides earthquake warnings and notifications about nearby earthquakes. Blake. My shake. Wait, wait, I mean, what, what is my shake? Ooh, too late, Blake. You already gave your response without phrasing it as a question. Wait, that's it? It just needs to be in the form of a question? <laughs> well, Professor, that is how you play the game. Bob. What is my shake? Correct. Bob, you're rocking and rolling today. <laughs> okay, folks, we have reached today's final Jeopardy, and the category is family emergency. Contestants, write down your wagers. They're all going down. All of them. In case of separation during a disaster, a family emergency plan should specify this important location. Contestants, write down your responses and good luck. And that's time. Blake, we go to you first. You wrote down what is the beach for $123,456? Ooh, I'm sorry, Blake. That brings you all the way down to $47,344. Oh, crabs. Oh, Bob, you're up next. I'm not quite sure how you did that so fast. Can... Sorry, but uh, that is incorrect. You know, Catastropher, art is subjective, but that's all right. It's just another happy accident for the books. And last but not least, Professor Fitzgerald, what is a predetermined meeting spot for $10 million? That is correct, Professor. <laughs> what, a, what a comeback. Congratulations, that makes you our finalist for this game. Yeah! Yes! Yes! Ah, 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 ah. I'll see you next time. Uh, this is, uh, see how this unfolds on the next episode of You're in Jeopardy. I'd spent plenty of time in this seedy, threadbare excuse for a town in my day. But somehow, this time was different. I knew something was coming. I could feel it in the air. Not unlike an alley cat sensing a mangy rat before it appears from behind a dumpster. But the questions I kept asking myself were, what was coming, and when. There was only one low-down character I knew I could call on for information. Now he was a slippery type, a bit wishy-washy. Most people in the know call him the weatherman. 
Not only did I need intel from him, but he had something of mine, and I wanted it back. Leonard? Nobody's called me that name in... 10 years? My God, it's really you, isn't it? How have you been? All right, all right, enough with the pleasantries. I believe you have something of mine that you're overdue to return. Ah, right. L l let's discuss that later. Here, have a drink first. Well, all right then. Barkeep, Shirley Temple, neat. There's something else I wanted to ask you. Do you feel it? This thing that's coming? I would think you would have sensed it first. I would think you would have sensed it first. Well, they don't call me the weatherman for nothing. There's something coming. It's gonna shake up this whole crummy town before you can say duck and cover. Are you saying, are you saying what I think you're saying? It's been decades since the last big one. We're due for another one really soon and we'd better be prepared when it comes. Get under the table. Drop, cover, and hold on. So now is probably not the best time to ask when you're gonna return my hand crank radio. What? Are you serious right now? We're in the middle of a major quake here. But I wanted to put it in my home preparedness kit. Well, it's a little late for that right now, don't you think? That was my only hand crank radio, and you stole it. Come on now. This is hardly the time for petty squabbles. Hey, you there, behind the bar. Go fit your tool chest in the back and secure those shelves in place. I'll fix it yourself. We don't need anything else falling. There's bound to be an aftershock. It's as likely as a cockroach jonesing for a turkey sandwich. Hold on. You are not gonna worm your way out of this with your fancy turkey sandwich talk. I want my radio back. Okay, okay. Don't get your trench coat in a twist. Let's go outside, check and make sure it's safe, and then we can amble on over to my place and you can get your doggone radio back. All right, Leonard, lead the way. <laughs> You know, I may have been a little harsh. You did just about save my life back there. Well, what can I say? I have a reflex for these things. It's not unlike. Oh, some metaphor about a jackrabbit on a bicycle or a jumping bean in a frying pan, right? I guess you know me better than I thought. You know what, Lenny? This may be the start of a beautiful well, maybe an acquaintanceship, where we only talk every 10 years. We say we'll meet up, never do. Sounds about right to me. And now, another word from the community. People 
are still traumatized by the fires that we've experienced, five fires over the last five and a half years. And they're nervous about how much rain we've had over the winter producing very high vegetation. And so they're predicting mega fires this year. We're still not done rebuilding from the 2017 fires. People are still moving the, through the exercises. Do they want to rebuild? Can they get insurance? Can they finance the rebuilding? And even five years later, we know that you're still under PTSD. If the wind blows in, um, you know, higher, uh, the tree branches whip around or a smell of a barbecue, uh, it just brings them right back to the experience that night. After the 2017 fires, uh, the county organized the, um, uh, a series of folks uh, called the Hope Crisis Counselors and they were available to work with neighbors, neighborhoods, um, going out to institutions. We needed some mental health counseling in order to be healthy and help people navigate through their grief and recovery. I hope everyone is aware that the county helps to organize resources for folks who are still challenged by the trauma of any crisis, whether it's the fires or floods. And please, please reach out to us. Hi, I'm Kiki, and this is Plan Head with me, Kid Scientist. Today we're going to talk all about earthquakes. Many things can cause earthquakes, but a lot of the time it's when two tectonic plates slide past each other in different directions. California has a lot of earthquake activity on what we call fault lines, which sometimes form when tectonic plates are moving next to each other. Tectonic plate boundaries are always faults, but not all faults are tectonic plates. Boundaries. Huh? I don't even know what I just said. Whose fault is that? Okay, basically, if the crown does this, or this, it can cause this. And if you live near an ocean, you might also be at risk of a tsunami if an earthquake hits. So if you want to be prepared for the next rocky encounter, follow these simple steps. Number one, if there's an earthquake or a tsunami, it's important to have a plan about where to meet your family if you get separated. Make sure to pick two locations, one that's close to home and one that's a central location near where your family works, plays, or goes to school. <laughs> Make sure those places are 100 feet or more above the sea level or at least one mile inland. Number two, practice drop, cover, and hold on with your family and coworkers. When you start to feel shaking and quaking, you drop, cover, and hold on. You can practice it at home and at work. Number three, as always, be sure to have a home emergency kit with any food, water, and anything else you need for at least seven days. Earthquakes can happen any time of year and without warning. That means it's extra important to be prepared and practice what to do if one happens. Well, that's all the time we have for today, everyone. And remember, it's always better to be prepared for anything and have nothing bad happen than to have something bad happen and not be prepared at all. Tune in next time for more advice on a small child. <laughs> on a small child. Sit on me and get advice. Tune in next time for more advice from a small child on Plan Ahead with Kid Scientist. That's me! And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Prepare Yourself. We hope you tune in next time to learn more about how you can prepare for a disaster or an emergency. Before we sign off, let's quickly review what we learned about preparing for an earthquake or a tsunami. We learned how to drop, cover, and hold on during an earthquake. We also learned about the MyShake app, which notifies you about nearby earthquakes. And we learned how to prepare your family and secure your home. Plus. Don't forget Kiki's great explanation of tectonic plates. This, or this, 
can cause this. <laughs> Makes sense to me. I don't know about you, but all this learning has made me kind of hungry. I could really go for a milk shake. Ooh, okay. Now that was seriously awful. Just like really all around terrible. You're really off your game today. Well, what can I say? My humor comes in waves. You need to be stopped. Like, end the show. Cut. Can we end it now? Say your line. Well, folks, this is all the time we have for now, but we hope to see you next time. And remember, prepare, prepare yourself! yourself.